This is the Blockhead Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Mm, hey there, Chris. Hey there, everyone. How um, are we all collectively going? We're doing collectively well. We've had a Good. very large gap here in between shows. Uh, oh, yeah. Partly because vacations happened on my end. <laughs> and partly because I was playing pinball a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the other so yeah so we're gonna touch upon those were available yeah we'll touch upon those real quickly um i yeah. had uh flown up north to uh, my mother-in-law's up in washington uh we picked up a car and then drove down uh the washington oregon and california coast um which is quite the drive uh i'm not gonna bore you with the details of the drive but i did want to point out one thing so remember when i'd gone to portland uh, to work on a TV show, Jared. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, and I commented about how, my God, there's just pinball everywhere in Oregon, right? Oh, yes, yeah. Okay, so we're driving down the 101. We're just like nothing's around in this area. Yeah. Does this little curve away from the ocean to go in, and there's everything's one street towns uh, when you're okay. in this portion, right? But it comes to a T-juncture. For, the, for this highway, and then you turn right. And right at that T, there's an arcade. like, And it's like a little tiny, small... Mom and dad Mom arcade. and dad kind of building, right? But mm. through the doorway, I can already see five pinball machines. <laughs> You're going, oh, did you drop in? No, no. We oh, were, we were on driving. a... We were on a... I was driving for like 11 hours that day, so... <laughs> You're on mission. We yeah. were on mission. But it just it yeah. cracked me up. I'm like, my God, even in... Rural, there ain't nobody town. around Oregon. There's freaking more pinball than, you know, within 15 miles area. of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that was uh, kind of uh, kind of interesting there. You uh, happened to win an award for one of your machines, yes? Yes, that's right. I don't have it yet, um, but uh, like physically in my person. Um, but yes, my latest machine timeline got best in show for solid state at, um, the Brisbane pinball and arcade collective or B pack as it's known. Look at um, that festival. Yeah. That's that. fantastic. Best in show. Wow. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I know that I had seen a post and I didn't comment cause I wanted to find out more from you. Uh, mm. you think you've discovered somebody else in Australia that has some Gottliebs. Yeah. I, it's been confirmed actually. Oh, that okay. The, the guy does actually. Um, I put an innocent post up on Facebook asking, there's this site called pinballowners.com. Um, yes. And I thought I'll search up, I'll search up some of my titles um, that I've got in and put the filter to Australia. And there's this one other guy and he has a massive, massive collection of pinball machines, not just Gottlieb System 80s, but a whole bunch of other ones like modern games and, you know, 90s games and stuff. But he has a lot of Gottlieb System 80s, mm. like a big collection. And I thought, oh, that's weird. The last update was like, you know, 2010. So I thought, uh, you know, maybe it's old listing, you know. But no, there was a couple of people I met at BPAC who subsequently um, friended me on Facebook. And I started the discussion and they said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, that's this guy. <laughs> and you know, we used to go over to his place and like have pinball meets over at his place and all that. So, yeah, we, there might actually be one other one other person in Australia that has the same games. As now, I do. obviously, Australia is huge. Um, yeah. How close? Down in Melbourne. Down in Melbourne. Okay. Melbourne. So, so that's uh, that's <clears throat> a couple of hundred kilometers from you. A couple of thousand. A couple kilometers. of thousand kilometers. Yeah, that's well, yeah. okay. Yeah, so that's that ain't like Jared's gonna go. Hey, I'm gonna pop in and say hello to this guy. Say good day. No, that's a uh, hop in an airplane and go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly right. That yeah. is uh, that is quite the trip. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that uh, is. This guy has has the same sort of titles, and all his titles are like you can list whether you might be open to trades or sales or whatever. Yeah. And all of his are like nope, no, <laughs> <laughs> we'll never sell apparently uh so yeah uh it's pretty cool pretty cool to see that someone else does actually have the same games because i honestly i thought i was the only one that had them yeah probably that's not right because i know scott hutchinson of hutchinson builders big big uh gottlieb collector probably has a lot of 
the titles but maybe not mine because i think that only a certain amount of them were brought into the country so mm. he has a very nice collection of got leads but i don't think mine are i don't think there were any doubles essentially okay of the of my ones so yeah there we go all right uh let's move on to uh other things that have uh, have actually only happened this week uh so we're not behind on this bit of news um mm. so mm. uh zen had another pinball bites show they announced their next two tables that are uh releasing at the end of this month one of them is goat simulator which is a big huh <laughs> it was, I was like, huh? What? Um, yeah. And then the other one is Princess Bride, which is, which is... Uh, wow, what a quinky dink. <laughs> um, yeah, because P3 have done one as well. Um, now, we P3. had uh, reached out to Mel, and he swears <laughs> cause, uh, that the Princess Bride was purely coincidence there was no oh they're doing yeah. it we need to do it kind of uh, thing going on on either party um which is the same yeah. thing that happened what was the other one that uh texas, oh, Mandal- chainsaw, texas yeah. chainsaw and mandalorian yeah true yeah. yeah um they've all been just kind of quinky dinks <laughs> with, which is with really weird there's three in the row that are quinky dinks but yeah you know that's how things work there's obviously a license being released or something yeah um or maybe the, i think mel i think mentioned in passing they go to these trade fairs where they talk about licensing and properties that are available yeah. and they, they were probably shopping this license around and a number of people going oh yeah, yeah the princess bride will be a good one to do but and, goat simulator uh, is one from left field well mel said that it uh yeah it's something that he fondly remembered yeah the princess bride <laughs> well was also one. fondly remembered uh yeah so it's it's mel nostalgia pack i think yeah, that's, that's what right. we should just call <laughs> it <laughs> I really hope they they won't, but I, they probably will. That's what we're going to be calling it from now on. So uh, here's my thing. Uh, I watched the trailer for Goat Simulator. I've never played Goat Simulator. I honestly have Me no... I'm coming in blind here. Completely blind. I'm yeah. watching the trailer, and I'm like, why is the ball going backwards? But then, Oh, yeah. But then we see full, you know, like, that's in slow motion, but then there's regular video of it going, you know, normal... I'm like, I'm not getting, I don't understand what There's a what reference I'm there that I'm just not getting. Please help us in the chat. <laughs> Tell us what that's about, if you know. But I did um, like the fact that there was different types of balls rolling around. There was a bowling ball and a golf ball and I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, what I would love is if they all had different physics. Oh, really? I think that, I mean, wouldn't that be interesting? It's kind of like when playing Twilight Zone, you got the uh, ceramic ball out there. It's just a little bit different. Um, you know when that, you're playing, that'd be challenging. It would, would be. add a different, a definite dimension to the table if they did that. But the table yeah. already looks wacky enough that I'm like, why not? At this point, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, <laughs> it, look, I'm, I'm very intrigued to to play it. I have, I'll have no idea. Yeah, I need need to almost have like, can someone give me a goat sim 101? <laughs> like, please help me relate the memes that are in this table and memes and themes in this table. So I can understand what's going on because yeah. I, I, I will not play Goat Simulator. It's not one that I will play. Yeah. Um, like in real life. So you're gonna have to give me like a, a cheat sheet for this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then as for Princess Bride, um, I was very pleased to hear the audio package going on. Uh, oh yeah, that it's voices lifted directly from the movie. Yeah. Um, and good quality voices too. Yeah. Like they sound pretty crisp. Um, um, the art is interesting because it's got a very cartoony look to it. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it might be a little too busy for my taste because, mm. um, like, the castle there is all very square blocks, and I don't know. Most of my pinball, right. I like to have flowy lines, but mm. um, you know, jury's out obviously until it's in my hands and I'm playing it. But yeah, we've got to flip it. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. It's, it looks like I'm looking at some of the like the the sizzle reel and I'm going oh okay there's the 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 castle sort of mini play field a little bit like Excalibur but not mm-hmm. um, obviously but I thought oh that feels familiar but I'm sure it won't be when you play it um, and strangely I enough know, I thought it, Game of Thrones but well yeah <laughs> but you know from the Zen universe it's definitely Excalibur yeah um, but you know there's a it does look interesting to, to shoot. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think um, it's going to be probably, for me, the pick out of the two. Um, I think it just has 
the layout looks a little bit more enticing for me. Um, I'd also be curious to know the uh, in terms of those playing up the fact that you're digital pinball, uh, the fire mm. swamp moments with the fire uh, oh, popping out. Popping out. I was like, okay, that's yeah. that's pretty cool. That's better than a cardboard cutout for sure. <laughs> oh, I, I, it doesn't. I mean, there are some cardboard cutouts. There are targets that they they throw up in the play field. That's like, I think that's actually now a Zen standard. It like, sure does. That's seem how like they it. do play field interaction, which is, you know, if that's how they're doing it, that's actually fine. And, and I mean, actually, hey, you know what? Clearly, their <laughs> Jaws table influenced Stern's Jaws table. <laughs> Well, 100% it did, yeah. We've been playing <laughs> that a bit lately. I'm going, oh, look at that Zen pop-up target there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's pretty. It's it's great to see that crossover where, you know, people clearly been inspired by that sort of thing. Yeah. And they've been able to implement it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so obviously we'll have more to say about uh, those two tables once we're, you know, playing actually them. playing them. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. right now I can just go, mm, yeah, pretty. Uh, <laughs> leave it at Definitely that. Definitely pretty. Uh, now, the other yeah. thing that came out in that Pinball Bites was a hint as to the next two, uh, or not next two, next three tables. So it's going to be a three-table pack, apparently, uh, for Bally Williams. Uh, yeah. And the hint was one is from 1988 and two are from 1989. So, Jared, I thought mm. we would go through a list of all the tables that came out in those two years. And yep. I'm just going to point out, damn, they weren't shy about releasing tables, were they? <laughs> they were pumping out games in that era. Jeez Louise. <laughs> this, this idea of Stern with, ah, we'll release one, we'll release four a year max. Mm. Williams back then was like, uh, yeah, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah let's gonna, do about eight let's let's do four and a quarter <clears throat> that's mm. that sounds good all right so here we go here's uh our lineup for 1988 um i've separated them by uh what's bally and what's williams okay so for bally we have uh the lost world truck stop ramp warrior blackwater 100 and then uh, the williams tables are jokers cyclone Taxi and Bonsai Run. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to note, and for those of you that want to try and figure out what they're going to be doing, the Bally tables. This is the year that Williams purchased Bally, so uh, I the don't, acquisition year. Right. Yeah. So these Bally tables are definitely still very much Bally designed. And Williams didn't really have a hand in any of them. And the mm -hmm. Bally ones all, are all running on that system uh, 6803. Yeah. Whereas the... It's commonly tarred as system 11, but it's not. No. The um, Whereas the Williams tables are all system 11. Yeah. Zen has cracked the nut on system 11. I don't believe yep. they've touched 6803. So if you want to do no. your speculation, I think you limit yourself down to these four, which is Jokers, Cyclone, Taxi, Bonsai Run. Mm -hmm. Interestingly yeah, enough, that's right. uh, when I think back to... Well, I know I played pinball when I was a kid, but I mm. couldn't tell you what tables I put hands on, right? Mm. The tables that I for sure... I vividly remember in high school driving down to Balboa Fun Zone in Newport Beach uh, to the arcade that was there and the tables that I distinctly remember putting quarters into. Haunted House, Bonsai Run, and Comet. Right. Um, so it's, it's just kind of fun to be like, wow, well, there's Bonsai Run. Comet... Cyclone's obviously the sequel to that, and I probably played Cyclone there also. Um, mm. I just I happen to remember that little jump ramp into the the big holes of of uh, Comet. Um, yeah. Taxi, I don't know that I put hands on him uh, that early, and Jokers, I know for a fact. I I honestly don't know. I know I've played it in person, but probably years years later. Um, yeah, I only played a Jokers. Well, when I say not that long ago, it would have been the last five years when I saw it yeah. um, at one of these places that does like, or you can play mm -hmm. pinball. 
was in pretty rough shape, but it was like, oh yeah. It, it, there's not a lot going on there. No, but um, I like to think that 88 is basically the year that I became very much aware of pinball. And then yes. it was 91 <clears throat> uh, when I worked at the arcade that had Whirlwind and Roller Games. And I attribute those two as the tables that I learned how to play pinball on. Um, right. Yeah, for real. So, anyway, those are your 88 was, tables. Was, yeah, right. Um, like I said, if I was a betting man, I'd be going for those. One of those four Williams tables is going to be in yeah, that the pack. Six, yeah, the System 11s. Yeah. Um, moving over to 1989, uh, we've got uh, two more Bally's that are 6803. One of them is Atlantis. The other one is Transporter the Rescue. And then we've got what I would call System 11 Bally's uh, Mousing Around and Elvira and the Party Monster. And then for our Williams tables, we've got Bad Cats, Police Force, Pool. I don't know that I know anything about Pool. Um, what, just called Pool? It's just called Pool. Never heard of that one. M right? Me neither. Um, Black Knight 2000. And mm -hmm. Earthshaker. Oh, I might have heard of that one. You might have heard of Black Knight 2000. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's... Okay, granted, I'm pulling this list off of... Uh, somebody had posted to the Facebook uh, fan page of Zen. Uh, mm. All the tables that had come out in that year. Uh, mm. We, me and Jared, already found one table that they'd listed that we went... That don't exist. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so it doesn't exist on on IPDB, which yeah. is like what I consider the canonical reference. Um, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna real quickly look up pool. <laughs> <clears throat> pool. It's you know what that sounds like. It sounds like a Zachariah table with their it, so original. It does. So yeah. original. Uh, thing. Come on, search for it. Oh my god, how many different pools yeah. are there? Oh. Yeah, there's probably a lot. Pool, Williams, 1989, none produced. <laughs> none produced. Wait, hold on, hold on. Is that right? No, especially. Oh no, uh, I take it back. Um, yeah. So, oh, 569 produced. That's a low run. That's a low, that's low a, run. It says that it became. Means that's a no. It became Bally's Pool Sharks. Oh, so eventually, it was like an early prototype. Yeah, I think they turned into. Yeah. No, that so I think coming. we can cross pool off the list. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pool's gone. Pool's gone. Um, I know people have been clamoring for bad cats. I think mouse and around is not a great game. I think mouse and around is the superior uh, cat game. <laughs> yeah, if you were looking for a cat and mouse, <laughs> yes. Like if you, it's the mouse all the way. Yeah, um, mouse the, and the bad great. cats. I've played it. It's. It can essentially become a one-trick pony. There's like a really big lucrative shot on it that you yeah. can get. And if you get it, <clears throat> that's it. Like you, you won basically if you're in competition mode. Yeah. Um, really frustrating game to play. I don't know what it is. I've always had a soft like. I always go, oh yeah, police force. I don't really. I don't know when the last time I is I ever played it. But for mm. some reason, Police Force always stands out in my mind as, oh, yeah, I remember. I really enjoyed that. Um, so that's there. Uh, I personally am rooting for Earthshaker just because that's, you know, the pet lawler. <laughs> uh, oh, we, a, we need all the... Like, out of all those. I want all the disaster <clears throat> tables, and that would be the last of Lawler's disaster tables. Um, yeah. Oh, Whirlwind, honestly, is <clears throat> probably the pick for me. Uh, not Whirlwind. Earthshaker for is sure. the pick for me out of there. It's just such a such a good one. It is like, really good. Yeah, um, great flow, interesting shots, and just a really cool toy of the Nevada split and Arizona splitting from California. And it's <laughs> yeah, just, it's so cool. I love that. Um, so yeah. anyway, those are your uh, tables. So from eighty nine, it said pick two. Uh, again, I'm going to throw out those. System 6803s, so it's Bad Cats, Police Force, Black Knight 2000, Earthshaker, Mouse and Round, Elvira and the Party Monsters uh, to pick between. Um, so you know, good luck speculating, man. folks. <laughs> yeah, good luck speculating. But as an aside, you know, you were saying, you know, it was Nevada and California splitting. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's actually, I think, become a bit of a pinball trope because when you get to the wizard mode in um, Roadshow, that's what happens. And well, yeah. 
And it's like, that's also a Pat Lawler, isn't it? Uh-huh, it is. That's why so, it's... So, yeah. It, it's great. fitting. <laughs> yeah, it's very fitting. I think it's 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 a lovely nod to Earthshaker. I like yeah. that Williams was doing that. Um, it, you know, it's what Junkyard did, you know, going old school with that. I liked that yeah. uh, now and then you'd get call-outs in a table. You know, Twilight Zone did it with... Uh, uh, with the radio, fast lock. Yeah, fast lock. Um, fast lock. Just doing mm. callbacks to other machines. I like that uh, you have the the cow Easter eggs in like all the machines. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, I I really that just kind of makes me grin. Be happy about that. Yes. Um, all right. So those are all the Zen announcements on that front. Um, I've got other Zen things to talk about, but this is all related to. Uh, at games and the uh, Legends Pinball 4K machine. So while we've been gone, uh, there's been a couple of table drops there, Jared. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Let's so so they dropped the DreamWorks pack, which is your oh, okay. trolls, uh, dragons, and uh, Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. That's the ones. And then they also dropped My Little Pony. Um, so basically, all of those Apple, uh, all the, the, the Apple arcade games, um, Zen Zen Pinball Arcade, yeah, whatever it's called. That's, those apps. are all popping out here. Um, mm. They dropped the Gearbox pack, which oh, yeah. was uh, uh, Borderlands, Borderlands and Brother in Arms and uh, uh, Homeworld. The other one, I'm like Homeworld. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. And then they just dropped Garfield. And they mm. finally released the uh, Godzilla and Kong threesome. There okay, go. that's out now. Yeah. Good. That's a lot of content. It's a lot of content. Um, mm. It's interesting because you can see, like, the arcade ones, the graphics were never, the, the lighting was never great on any of those to begin with. Mm. Um, yeah. So they translate well over <laughs> into this pack. Um, yeah, they're just bright. They're, they're just, just they're just bright. Fully lit. Yeah, so I don't think yeah. Zen had to do much uh, downgrading of those. The gearbox pack, obviously, they had to uh, shave and cut some corners there. Mm. Um, basically, it's uh, you really don't notice it until you load up the OTG mode and actually look at these games in pinball effects and then you go oh there's the lighting um Rough. but if you're but that's again it's it's only if you're doing side by side that you go oh yeah that's where it is but in the moment i kind of just forget about it and it's amazing how often i simply play the native on the cab versions rather than booting up the computer and and playing those you're um, happy just to experience them as they are on the cabinet as they are plus there's a couple of things that i'll go into the into my nightmare <laughs> of what i've been trying to solve in otg with with the cabinet um and okay. why native playing is is better at the moment um here's the interesting that I, I none of these tables other than brother in arms was one that i really enjoyed playing uh previously um, and you know I had no love at all for Homeworld. No. Um, and none of the Kong and Godzilla tables, I found them... Really spoke to you either. They didn't speak to me, and they were really confusing. Like, I didn't know mm. where the ball was going to be coming out. Uh, it was just hard to track. Uh, visually hard to understand with the... Because most of the inserts didn't have text on them. Uh, like... I know on Kong and on Godzilla, they don't have text. On Kong versus Godzilla, they have text, but there's so many of them um, mm. that when you're playing in the landscape mode, they just kind of blur, and you are you can't really read them. Mm -hmm. So playing in full cabinet on a big TV, or you know, a big monitor, basically, I really am enjoying. <laughs> I, I actually enjoyed Homeworld. I'm you like, did? I'm, I'm like, you know what? This isn't half bad. <laughs> this is... I, I, I can groove along to this. And then I've been playing the Kong and Godzilla stuff. And where previously I did not enjoy the Kong table because I couldn't tell where the hell the ball was rolling. Hmm. Now I fully understand where the ball is going. 
I'm actually doing some decent scores. Um, I still hate the fact that it's the same two actors that performed on Alien vs. Predator doing their mm. stupid call-outs that are just... Doing their bit. Oh, my God. They are bad call-outs. They're really bad call-outs. They're just terribly written yeah. call-outs. Um, but even playing Godzilla, uh, it just it makes a lot more sense, and I visually can actually read what's going on, and so now I'm able to progress a lot farther. Uh, so you're saying that when you're playing those particular games on cabinet mode, you're not having the problem of the... Uh, the table being in that sort of isometric view perspective like you'd have on a like wall mounted tv correct um and therefore because everything is both fully filling the screen everything's a lot closer to you yes so you're having no problem reading text on inserts and stuff like correct that. and honestly this this is it's interesting to say that because on those tables, that's the biggest problem I've had as well. Because do you, you know, even if you're playing this game at 2K, which is what I'm sort of running it at as a happy medium, um, even at 2K, you can't see any anything at the back of the table. Yeah, like, it, and a lot of those tables, the the inserts are directional, but they are very small. Yeah, and this is another thing that we we keep on banging on about it's like remember that you're like if cabinet mode is a smaller subset of the market that you're trying to hit here which is console and pc and stuff then you, you got to make sure that those inserts are either nice and big and have the information that you need to be able to understand what's going on um or something else that makes them easy to understand and like impossible to miss if you need to shoot them because of the way you're presenting the tables. It's just like, yeah, big, big triangles is the reason why that they had them on <laughs> Belly Williams because they were, you could not miss them. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I thought that was, uh, it's an interesting shift in my opinion. <clears throat> um, I'm glad you're getting into to home world. It, it, it has things to offer. Yeah. Um, once you, once you can sort of see what you're shooting at, um, I still I still wish they'd stop that seesaw. Oh my god! Warlock. I've tried if, nudge, I've tried nudging to it to move. try and make it happen faster. Yeah, I have actually done that in the past. <laughs> I've sacrificed tilts just to try and get the bloody ball out of there. If they could just put a patch in to knock that like up down into in, into yeah. a thing, please. It's yeah. just ridiculous. It is. It's really ridiculous. It stays up there too long. Um, now, other uh, things that have just come out for uh, at games. Uh, one, at the end of this month, uh, the Jurassic Park uh, three pack is coming out, uh, so that'll oh, be right. fantastic. Um, oh, and then yeah, playing that on on portrait. It's oh, it's amazing. so much better. Yeah, I've already it's done so that much. in using pinball effects in OTG. Mm. Yeah, it's so much better. Um, yeah. But then they've <clears> also <throat> announced new pricing availability. So you can still buy hmm. the cabinets the way that they have been. Um, but they're also now offering basically saving you $200. But here's what you sacrifice. Hmm. You're only able to get either Adam's Family or Attack from Mars as your cabinet choice. Oh, okay. They'll only come with that one game on them as opposed to the total of 15 that you get if you bought the full price version. Oh. It will not come with the pinball topper, which they'll sell you separately for $150. Um, now, if you already start doing the math, <laughs> you're already in the hole. If you wanted all those tables that were all the Zacharia tables that were included. Yeah. And you want the pinball topper? You the you're combo. now you're now officially already in the hole because that's going to cost you over two hundred dollars. Um, not to mention now you're going to have to pay separate shipping for all that. Um, hmm. They also will have you locked out of being able to use OTG mode. A what? As well as any third party application. 
if you want those unlocked, you'll have to pay another hundred dollars, and then those would be what? unlocked. So nah. I understand the thinking being that some people have no intention of ever hooking up a computer to this. So sure, why not save some money by doing that right there? Um, uh, but it's not it's not even a piece of hardware. It's literally a software thing that they'll you pay your hundred bucks and they go pink. Okay, now you have access. Um, the third party thing is a really interesting one because there is currently is only one thirty third party app out. And it's not even hundred percent out, but basically they've figured out how to put VPX onto a thumb drive and be able to run it through App Games's. Uh, graphic card? No way. Yes. And at Games is fully on board with this, but this little maneuver would block that from being able to happen. <laughs> what are they doing nickel and diming people <laughs> that's, for this? And that's, what, and that's what the community is just going, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what I mean, you... sure, I, I get... Look, I, I, I'd actually be quite happy to have an option when I'm purchasing, purchasing the table to go, look, no, I just want the shell. Yeah, I don't want to buy anything from your storefront. I just want to be able to OTG it. So, yeah. not get rid of the topper. Don't need that. Um, get rid of the um, all the tables on the thing if you want. Mm-hmm. I don't need them. Mm-hmm. And and then just give me the option to connect my computer up to it. Use it as a shell. Yep, sign me up. But of course, this is the exact they opposite. Don't want that. <laughs> of what they want. That's the exact opposite right. of what they want because right. they want you to buy games through the store so they can make money because the hardware is a loss leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But again, I come back to that being said, it's really nice just going native with the tables. So Mm. here's what I've been running up against, Jared. Uh, There are two ways of using the machine as a controller uh, in the OTG Mm. settings. And that is one having it send the information as if it was a keyboard. And then the other two is if it sends the information as if it was a gamepad. Now, they both have their pluses and minuses. Mm. If you send the information as a keyboard, you're still able to use the trackball, like if you have the uh, arcade controller panel on top, like I do. You're still able to use the trackball now to move the mouse. You can set up your buttons to be, you know, your right click, left click on the mouse. So you can navigate your whole PC set up and get into the games that you want to get into. Well, that's cool. That's cool, right? The problem that I've run into is that the plunger is either full pull or no pull. There's no in between. Right? Right. Because it's like pushing the enter button. So it's um, a solenoid. Basically. Yes. yes. Sure. If you want to call that solenoid. So there goes any chance of doing any of your uh, skill, uh, shots. skill shots. Which, I mean, skill shots aren't really the end of the world, but still, it, no. it's annoying. Still, it's, uh, yeah. I, yeah. You should be able to do, you should be able to do that. Yes. Right, if you want to. Yes, yes. correct. Uh, the other ask, now, interestingly enough, the analog nudge, so bumping the table, works. Oh, okay. Now, in the descriptor of the keyboard, it says that it's bound to keys. Okay. This is where it's interesting. If you play the gamepad where it says it's bound to the XY axis, not the case. Nudge does not work in gamepad. The only way you can make it work is by hitting the button on the side of the cabinet to make it nudge. So I think at games has oopsed <laughs> and right. reversed some coding there. Um, I have, But if you play with gamepad, now when I pull the plunger, it actually is a plunge pull. Oh, so it's like... The only thing you're getting between keyboard and and controller is they've turned on analog. Right. But, that's, but here's that's the problem. Here's the problem with using the gamepad. Now you cannot control anything on your PC. So you do have to have yet I have like a, a little ha- I have a little handheld keyboard controller that's got touch screen and all that. Uh, oh, yeah, so yeah. I still need to use that to navigate everything to get into it. Mm. Um Also, I should note that when you're using the keyboard and you go to use the D-pad to select tables in Zen, it skips one row and skips over one. So then you're having to still use highlight with a mouse and click the button to do it rather than normal navigation. 
Whereas mm. the gamepad, it works as it should. So what I'm saying is, is there's frustrations. It's not 100%. Um, I still mm. have not put in uh, Pinup Popper and done any of that. So all of that yeah. might be solved by doing that. But as it might is be. right now, it's an annoyance. And it's one of those things of why I don't turn on OTG. Because right. it's, it's an extra... Well, here's the other one other thing that, <laughs> that is annoying that happens. So the video card I have, it's got one... One display port? No, two display ports. And then hmm. HDMI. It's got actually two HDMI. But anyway, I ain't into at games the cabinet. It's got three HDMI ports. So I've got converter cables from a, from data port to HDMI. But because I'm using that one HDMI, the monitor always wants to default to the HDMI, right? Right. Now I'm also my back glass and my DMD. I'm setting those up for 1080p as opposed to uh, being in 4K or 2K. I've actually set the machine to 2K because uh, 4K is... Hey, it's overkill. It's overkill. I don't see a difference, and it's just going to bog the system down. Yeah, absolutely. But as soon as you start Zen, the monitors freak out a little bit because mm. it's trying to convert and figure out what needs to go where. And in that mode, it reverts back to basically HDMI first, which is not where my audio is coming through, so I lose audio. So then nice. what I have to do is I have to back out of OTG, back into the native, and then tap the button to go back in. Now I have my audio back. And now I have everything back, but it's just like two extra steps I have to do to make it function. Yeah. And Whereas you just turn the game on and start Turn playing. the game on and go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yes. And, you know, this is... This is kind of the reason why I haven't like the allure of an actual really nice digital pinball table in the garage in place of one of the ones that I've got there mm -hmm. at the moment feels feels like a good thing. Yeah. But I'm just these are the stories that make me go, you know what, I would never touch it. <laughs> I would I would buy a dedicated PC for it and because of those problems, I I would just never Never touch it. Well, and it's, it's um, those problems that we've said. It's why I keep on not doing VPX. Because I know mm. the headache that mm. is involved in it. Um, shoot, here's the headache. And damn it, Zen, come on. Um, <laughs> mm. The back glass. Oh, yeah. What's going on with that? Like, Why, why do them. I have to search for back glass? Why? You have them made up. Why don't for you the have tables the, in the for the tables? Room. Yeah. Why don't you have those just here download here or better yet? Why do I have to go through my whole into my steam and find the little mod section to download them into based off of and write the correct table number? That's it. Why don't you just, why don't we just download them with them? Why isn't it like just attached? Part of cabinet mode. I, just... I, I don't get it. And there's some no. backlash that I literally cannot find. Cannot mm. find. I have had to basically create my own. Now, there are some people that have put out back glass, and granted, I'm a little bit bougie about some of these, where I'm like, mm. that's bad art. I'm not having that up there. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, you, you know, know we've, we've, had, we've had our collection of back glasses, which are probably absolutely redundant now. Oh, the, um, our, mine all have DMD and speaker grills put onto them, so you can't use them. Uh, yeah, I'm a. I'm probably going to upload all the ones that I've collected now. That's probably not a bad idea. Re refresh the collection that you have that we have hosted yeah. up on on the Google Drive. So I mean, yeah, there's so many different. I think probably there's so many different sources of these back glasses now that that collection is redundant. But just to keep parity, it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, but like there's some really cool ones that that were out there with. Uh, like I think with like Alien versus Predator, where it, they were both battling around a giant pinball, and it looked really cool. Cannot yeah. find it. I don't know where the heck that one went. Um, no. There's some that Zen well, have put out. They're not in Zen. They're not in Pinball FX, are they? No, because those tables haven't made it there yet. No. which is no. why they're not there. And the back glass was never designed for FX3 by Zen. It was done by somebody else, as far as I know. Correct. Um, yeah, yeah. But then there is there is 
others that Zen has basically made available. And I'm like, that's just ugly and lazy, Zen. I don't like it. <laughs> mm. um, the one they did for Peanuts, I'm just like, or for the Snoopy table, I'm just like, no, that's I'm not having it. It's doesn't look good. Um, mm. And so there's that issue that comes on. The one that was for Civil War, it's just Cap and uh, Iron Man looking at each other, but it's like cel-shaded art, and it's mm. very boring, very flat-looking. So I had yeah. to go around and find a better one. I could not, for the life of me, find a Deep Space Nine or Discovery Bat Glass. Um, I wound up finding one that I really liked, and then I eventually found the official Zen one, and I looked at the official Zen one and went, looks like crap. No, I'm sticking with the one that mm. I found. Um, it's like the uh, the early uh, Stern Photoshop cut and paste yes. designs that they were doing. Yeah. 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 Um, and you don't really like when you're just looking at a thumbnail, it looks all fine. But when you actually have it up on a 24 inch monitor staring at you, it becomes a whole different ball of wax. Mm. Um, yeah. So anyway, but that's yeah. those are I, I I know that on one day I literally was spending an hour and a half trying to find just those Star Trek back glass. Yeah, that's just that's trying to find something that would work, anything that would work. Um, yeah. Without me having to, you know, go in and Photoshop and drop in my own title on top of an image that I found that I, you know, liked and you know, all that. Mm -hmm. I was just looking for, yeah. Look, I was looking for somebody else that had already done the work because I know people have already mm. done the work. But finding yeah, that, there's plenty of people out there that have the design skills to do this really well. Dude, and and there are some people out it. there that are insanely talented. Clearly, mm. um, so anywho, that's what that one was. Yeah, I could see your frustration with yeah. like the whole. I could see why why you want to just play them natively and i also have a better understanding that yeah a physical pinball table to play digital is not what i want um when, but like, i'm not playing pinball effects on my pc my office pc anymore that's just, you're not no no i don't i don't like it <laughs> playing with the controller like playing with a controller now that's not no i need i want the buttons i want the flippers even if, i want even the giant with your screen pin sim even with your pin sim on your computer? I mean, I could, but what's the point? I have it out on the, mm. that one. <laughs> it's mm. kind of pointless. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to still try out <laughs> uh, when Gibson Pinball comes out with their uh, small laptop controller. Oh, yeah. Little desktop that, mm, yes. I really, really want to try that out. Um, yes. That does look really uh, that interesting, looks really good. doesn't it? Um, oh, and mm. I should also point out, Jared, you'll be happy to hear this. Uh, mm. After arranging it and making it the correct size that I liked, uh, Demon's Tilt in cabinet mode is freaking awesome. Yes. Um, and so then I promptly downloaded Xeno Tilt, and that's freaking mm. awesome. Um, yeah. I just wish they would allow you to put a back glass up. Oh, right. Which they don't yeah. have. The, uh, it, I understand the scoring. That's a whole. It's much too large to fit into uh, the DMD a area. A DMD. I, I understand. But it looked great as the back glass, actually. Yes, like, it would look fantastic as the back glass. Imagine if you could throw that up as like the back glass. Um, that that would be the perfect scenario. Yeah. yeah. You know. So I was yeah. waiting for I was waiting for Xeno Tilt to go on some sale, and I wound yeah. up picking it up for ten bucks. So. Uh, that's money well spent. Yeah. It's a great game yeah, for that. It really is. It really is. Um, yeah. I would oh. love to be able to play it in full screen, like 40-inch tape. It mm -hmm. would be a very, very different experience of playing it with the multiple screens. Um, now, they, granted, I... They've actually I, just about to... I made it so that it. almost the entire play field is visible. Like, I blew it up as much as I could to fit to the edge without it, like, mm. being turned off that goddamn shake. Um, oh, I'll get rid of that. Turn, tuned down the strobe effects. The bloom. Yeah, they turned off a whole bunch of that it, stuff. Um, that, yeah. that stuff is makes it just painful to play. But once you got all that done, yeah. um, especially when you're playing in multi ball, on where you got one ball way up the top and one ball down at the bottom, it makes it so much that you can actually. Oh, so much easier. Yeah, so much easier to play. Because it automatically zooms out when you're yeah. playing on a PC screen, which makes it going, teeny tiny. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's pinball for ants. What's yeah, going pretty on? Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> but it, it is the, like both of them. They've actually uh, Xeno Tilt is just about to exit um, early access. Oh, okay. They put a whole bunch of um, new game modes uh, into uh, the Xeno Tilt, so you've got like 
EX mode, which adds basically brand new sub sub games and stuff, which are really fun to hmm. play. Um, you've got a survival mode in there where you've got to last for 20 minutes. Um, and you've got to, the only way you can last for 20 minutes is to collect these little time expanders on the play field. Really challenging. I've only been able to get up to, I think, like four and a half minutes before I died. Hmm. Um, you've got to be really good to play that mode. And the, the hardcore mode is they got they basically put lightning flippers in the game. Oh, God. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. One ball um, and lightning flippers. Uh, it, yeah, great. Wow. Really good. Brutal, but good. Well, hey, that uh, that brings us into something there. Obviously, oh, yeah, it does too. Yeah, so obviously every pinball machine has its own thing, its own... Uh, reason why you may or may not like and or love it um or maybe even just plain hate it and go i don't want to even touch that so mm. uh we're calling this what's your favorite gimmick um yeah i've got a whole list of i'm gonna call them very generic gimmicks uh that uh, you find on virtually any pinball machine um and i want to see if we can discover <laughs> myself and jared uh, what our taste is in pinball machines. Uh, what is mm. it that when we walk up to a machine that makes us immediately go, yes, as opposed to, eh. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, Jared, let's start this off. I'm going to allow you to pick one from the following things. These mm -hmm. are your flippers. Obviously, the main input of, to, of any pinball machine. Do you like standard flippers, zipper flippers, Two-inch flippers, lightning flippers, a machine that has midfield flippers, or a machine that has, I'm calling them alternate layout uh, flippers. So the flippers might be flipping backwards, or you might have four flippers down at the bottom, or they might be, you know, like on EMs where they were wildly wide apart from each other with, you know, lanes in the middle. Um, those well, like scissors, scissor flippers and stuff like that. Well, that's that. what the zippers are, where, where they were the two-inch, but then they zipped in and... and no, made, it's, well, oh, there's zipper... Was, and there's f and scissor. Flippers. I don't know what so, scissor like, flipper think is. Of, uh, think of like uh, Paragon, where both flippers go up at the same time and leave a big gap between <sighs> them. I'm just going to say yeah, no so to that. Yeah, so that's a no from me. Just I don't like no those. Okay, so of no. those, which is, what would you, um, what do you gravitate towards? Just give me standard. Standard? Mm. I happen to like a table that does have a set of midfield flippers on it. Okay, that's like always... an upper playfield shot. Not an upper playfield. Like a... No, like, like a, a... A, a, think Lawler. <laughs> think. Th okay, yeah. Think, think whirlwind. It's got a mid flipper, so a side angle shot, basically because yeah, of yeah. a flipper. Yeah, that's my preference. Okay. So, but you tend to just like something that has two standard flippers down the bottom, three inch. Okay, well, if you're calling bats. midfield, if you're calling midfield flippers, I wasn't quite sure what you meant by midfield. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that that. Some upper like flipper like uh, the getaway has um, adds variety in the game playing. Yes, I would probably say if that's what midfield is, and yes, I would also prefer midfield. Okay, as well. Yeah. All right. Next up, table with ramps. Um, mm. Now I realize that some people may not like ramps at all, um, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> right. Uh, because there's a number of different types of ramps. Uh, or what I consider ramps. It's not just the ramp that goes up, but it's also how the ball travels around once it is up that ramp itself. Um, so I've mm. broken it down to, and we can pick two. Ooh, Wire okay. form. Yeah. Plastic. Diversion ramps, or diverting ramps. Moving ramps. And ramps that have elaborate shapes. Mm, okay. Um... I like I'm trying to think of some of the recent games I played, like Infinity Wars, um, which have like a, a ramp you can shoot from either side. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that's something that I find really interesting because it, it opens up your shot possibilities. So, if that's an elaborate shape ramp, then I guess probably elaborate shapes is one okay um, for me. So. Elaborate shapes, and then I think out of that list, 
Uh, I like ramps that put the ball in different places. So diverting, diverting. ramps for me. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, for myself, I love wire forms. I just find them mm. very pretty. <laughs> um, they do look nice. They look so nice. Um, the mm. more wire form ramps there are, the better, or pathways, I should say, at that point. Um, and I like elaborate shapes. Uh, because yeah. if it looks like it's just going in a crazy knot, I'm down for that. But also, and I'm, I'm not a fan of plastic ramps, just because I kind of find them semi-ugly uh, a lot mm. of the times. But you come across something like Whitewater, and you cannot help but oh. want to send the ball on that ramp. It just you yeah, walk up to just... creature and you're like, I want that, I want that ball in the bowl. <laughs> that's all yep. I want, you know. I want it there. How do I get it? There? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So those are my uh, mine there. All right. Um, yeah, that's good. Next up, magnets. You're able to pick one of these three. Mm-hmm. Uh, an underplay field magnet. So think Adam's so family, one Dracula, the one that throws the you know can move the ball around or throws the ball mm-hmm. around. Um, a magnet that just captures the ball. Um, so just brr, put, keeps it in place. And then drops it. Um, yeah. It might just keep it in place or drop it eventually. Yeah, it, that's questionable mm. what it does. Um, or a magnet that is used with a toy. That's a tough one because right? I was I was, I was was going between ball capture and used with toy. But I am thinking of the applications that I've seen where a ball is captured. Mm-hmm. And... And for me, I can't go past the coolness that is the shadow (laughs) and how it captures the ball and drops it and flicks it back into the lock like that. Uh So it's a ball, it's a ball capture magnet for me. Ball capture for you. I think I'm Mm going to go with used with a toy. Um, Okay. What's a, what's a good example of that for you? A good example would be the T-Rex from Jurassic Park or uh, on Metallica, uh, the, the hammer. Oh, where it grabs it and slams it into yeah. the table? Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that being said, ball capture, like the... the uh, I'd almost say that the Metallica one is actually a ball capture. The Metallica one might be ball capture. I'm also thinking of in Tales of the Arabian Nights, how the ball captures and then goes thunk and drops that, below. That, that is ball that's, capture. That's that one. really cool. So, I, yeah. yeah. But... I don't know. If you call those, those are technically toy-related ones too. They so I can get what you're saying. Used yeah, toy. Mm, it, it's a tricky category. It is a one, tricky category. Would, that's why it's hard. It was really hard for me to go. Mm, not sure. That's why I think, because as opposed to what I'm thinking of, uh, you know how what is it on um, like Twilight Zone, where it just holds the ball then releases it. Holds it. Uh, same thing happens on roller games. Uh, right. Iron Man, where it, or is it Iron Man or X Men that it collects. The balls and then flings them, eventually. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Let's go with Iron Man because I don't consider those toys. I consider that just a magnet capturing the ball at some point and then releasing. And like Twister, for example, like with Ooh, its I don't know ball Twister. capture. Twister, it has like a, the balls that pop out of the uh, Dorothy, and then they hit on that magnetic disc, and the magnetic disc traps them, and they okay. then spin around, wobble, yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm going used more with a toy aspect. Look, if like. the, okay, I, I don't like to adjust my answer after it, but, but like, you're adjusting now. Disambigu- <laughs> disambiguation is actually important. Um, <laughs> so I think used with toy, rather than just like a like a magnet that just catches the ball then lets it go. Yeah, used with used with toy would probably just get over the line for me as well. And okay, it it's just over the line for me. Okay. Uh, now, I don't yeah. know if I'm using this correctly. Um, I'm calling it sinkholes. Mm. And like where the ball into the play field. Into the play field so that it can then come out again. Um, right. We're not talking about sources. We're talking about physical. The ball goes below the play field. Or... Yeah, I might, I might include saucers in this. So, uh, mm. okay. I categorize it like this. We get to pick one. One, Subway. So ball goes in one place, comes out another place. Mm. Ejects out, right? Yep. That's number one. 
Number two, ball ejects. This is where I'm going to go more where it's a saucer goes in a saucer and then plunges. So it might plunge up into a ramp. It might plunge back down at you. It might just um, kick out at you. It might yeah. kick out at you. Uh, and, yeah. and some of your sinkholes, you know, think of Monster Bash, where it goes in mm. and then fires right back out at you, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah, what I'm yeah. calling a ball eject. And then you have your cannons. Um where like T2 and um, Star Trek TNG. To even um, uh, Life Scammer Action, I think it is, where it goes back and it goes and fires it right down the middle of the play field. Oh, right. Um, um, okay. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm considering that a cannon where it's really firing something out, whether it's at the flippers or at a target that you're helping to aim. But... Those are what I'm calling my sinkholes. I don't know. It's a weird category. Anyway, you get to yeah. pick one of those. Hmm. Well, I do like the element of surprise with subways, but mm -hmm. sometimes they do slow down play mm -hmm. depending on how long the ball takes to get down to them. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's cannons. Cannons. All right. I'm going to go with. For me. I'm going to go with subways. I particularly like the surprise. Hmm. <laughs> Especially like where the... sometimes it always comes out <clears throat> the same way, and then all of a sudden you do a certain mode, and all of a sudden the lights run over here. No, it's coming over here. And you're like, well, wait, what? Yeah. Like the best implementation of a subway that I've seen recently is in Spooky Pinball's um, Kaiju and Halloween Tables, where it has a, uh, rather than having an up kicker, it has a silent ball elevator that just sneaks the ball out into the return lane without very much fanfare. And uh, so all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's a ball there. How did it get there? It freaks you out the first time you see it. So, <clears throat> but yes. All right. Uh, uh, next up, we're going to talk about, i calling this display. So how you read mm -hmm. your score, right? Scores. Uh, so yeah. uh, alphanumeric, <clears throat> yes, I know that some machines were just numeric. I'm rolling them all into one here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, alphanumerics, DMDs, Video screens, whether that be the full giant things that, you know, uh, uh, Jersey Jack is doing today or what Stern is doing um, or mm -hmm. what Zen is doing, you know. Um, so video screens or reels. Uh, video screens for me. Video for you. Yeah. I honestly, uh, excuse me, I'm crossing that out. I'm going DMD. Really? Okay. Yeah. I Why find, DMD for you? Uh, video screens, I find it difficult to find the information that I want quickly. I hmm. feel like I have to stare at the screen and my, you know, because there's video going on and I'm not necessarily finding the score, especially on a Jersey Jack where it's like, what the hell? Where do, and where am I looking to find the information I need? You've got like four different screens going on here. Um, yeah, that's certainly the case in Jersey Jack. There's a lot of detail going. It's not yeah. what you're saying is you prefer something that's glanceable and just gives me the. I like the simplicity of DMD, but I also enjoy the animations that happened on DMD, which is why I favor that over <clears throat> an alphanumeric. Um, alphanumerics were great, but I like that whole era of DM DMD. There was a lot of humor in there with the animations mm. they put in. Um, like them or not, some of the video modes were fun. Nobody's obviously doing video modes anymore. <laughs> um, no, you know. Although Jaws actually has a video mode. Oh, does it? <clears throat> and it has a video mode that, that you can put 3D glasses on for and play it in in like old school 1950s 3D. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Okay. yeah they're actually Stern branded glasses you can buy if you own one. I think maybe if you get the, the you buy a game, you actually get the glasses with it. Okay. But well, yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there we go. Um, that's not to say reels, they sound really nice, but. Oh, they do, but they're, they're they are very, <laughs> they are boring. They're boring. Yeah. Um, okay, next up, <clears throat> I'm calling this kinetic. Uh, so, uh, and you can pick two. Spinners. Yeah. Uh, ball diverters. Uh, captured balls. Uh, and jet bumpers. Uh, for me, uh, spinners and jet bumpers, please. <laughs> uh, I agree with the jet bumpers. And... You know, I do kind of like... 
a good ball diverter. So mm-hmm. again, I'm thinking of on Toten, the the spinner that's there. I know Jurassic Park has something that spins a little bit or whatever. Um, oh yeah. I kind of. <clears throat> I I Whirlwind has the spinning discs. Yeah. Mm. I'm I'm down with ball diverters. Ball diverters, thing that changed the path of the ball. Is what yes. You're saying there. Yeah. 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 Um. All right. Uh. <clears throat> next toys. You get to pick one. You either like a bash toy, a mechanical toy, so something that's physically functioning on the table, Mm -hmm. or you can have a thematic, but it's static toy. Um, I'm going to say, what was something that recently that we could do? Like basically like, you know, the Grogu on Mandalorian. It's just there, but it's big and it it adds theme element. Um, or do you like a table that doesn't have any toys on it at all? Mm, I'd say I, I definitely do like toys. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say, though, I prefer something that's functionally contributes to the game. So I have to say mechanical toys for me. Okay. I tend to think I like a bash toy. You like to, to hit something <clears throat> with a ball and interact with it. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, that's a tough one though, because there's some really cool mechanical things that, like, mechanical is almost the same for me as the elaborate ramps, because if you mm. know it does something, you desperately want to hit it to see it. So you're saying function. that you would have, you'd like to hit Frankenstein more than you'd like to use the mini playfield. Yes. On, on in Indiana Jones. Yes. Really. Yes. Ah. Right. Yes. Uh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all right. Lighting. Obviously, there's all sorts of different types of lights that uh, can mm. go on. Do you like the old school glow of incandescence? Oh, and you can pick two on this one. Mm. Uh, old school glow of incandescence. Do you like elaborate light sequences? So it's not just EM error with them going on and off, but there is actually pattern going on with them do you yeah. like what i'm calling rgb madness which like is like jersey jack <laughs> wizard of oz yeah <laughs> yeah yeah right. um clown vomit rgb is what do, i call it do you like flashers <clears throat> and strobes mm. uh or do you like a table and this is obviously part of the art package but the lights play a part of this that uh makes everything uv glow that's a really tough one because <laughs> I'm you get a to pick very, two. very big fan. I'm a very, very big fan of Stranger Things and how it has a UV coat mm-hmm. on the play field. Mm-hmm. That is just... And Big Bang Bar cool. looks fantastic in that. Even even if you put um, things like Attack from Mars with some UV light sources in it, it looks amazing as well. Um, but for me, it's elaborate lighting sequences and flashes and strobes, please. That's exactly what I have. <laughs> and and I'm okay to, to lump in high intensity LED light sequences into okay. that flashes and strobes thing because the the modern games now I'm actually seeing less and less flashes used and more and more high intensity LEDs used uh, okay. to replace the flashes because they they're just as vibrant now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah. Um but yes. I, I those like are the two things for me an elaborate light sequence because that also tends to help guide you where your ball's going to yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. It's like, so. shoot this thing. You can't miss it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah all right. Let's Helps move the... over into rules. <clears throat> uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to let this one, because there's so many combinations it can go. I'm going to say pick two or three uh, that oh, map wow, okay. into this. Yeah, right? So mm-hmm. do you like a table that is simple to play, has deep branching paths, is mode based but linear has stackable modes is just basically combo heaven <laughs> um is spellorama i know you don't like that jared but no uh, it, it has to be in there anyway <clears throat> spellorama um or one that has <clears throat> uh lots and lots of mini games so call it side quests and uh just little tasks to accomplish I always like the, um, <clears throat> I guess the walk up and play factor of mode based linear. Mm-hmm. 
um, where you have a clear place that you need to shoot and then you go through the modes and you get to a wizard mode at the end. Like, that is good. Mm -hmm. um, I like, though, with the mode-based linear, um, having modes that you can stack is quite fun. And I'm thinking in modes here, I'm lumping um, multi-ball into modes as well. Like, okay. I'm thinking Dracula's triple stack madness that you can get with its uh, three multi-balls going at once. That's amazing. Um and combo heaven. I wanted to shoot flow. I want combos to be going off and have that feeling of flow and be driven towards shot making that keeps that flow going. So yeah, those are three. All right, so three. mode stackable and combo for you. Yep. All right, for me, it's simple to play, mode-based linear, and stackable. Um, mm. I want to be able to walk up to a table and just start playing it and have immediate fun. Um, mm. I like a mode hole, knowing how to start something and I don't care if it means that it's <coughs> linear in action. Again, this is where I'm thinking uh, with Indiana with Jones. Well, I'm thinking Whirlwind. Um, you're, oh, yeah. I mean, it's not that it has modes per se, but it does have those boxes that, hey, right now you're playing in this, right? It's simple. Same as Funhouse. It's, same as Funhouse. It's linear. Um, but I love Monster Bash. Stackable modes mm. in that is really fun. I'm not usually a fan of stackable modes because sometimes too much can be going on. Um, yeah. But I think that's the deep branching path thing that I don't like. Um, yeah. I, this is what I really turns me off with the modern, the modern Sterns is like, you can't, you really have to, whenever Stern puts out a, a patch notes, yeah. if you want to be good at the game, you have to read them. Yeah. So you can understand what to do in the game. I just, it really turns me off because I'm old and <laughs> I don't like to think when I'm playing pinball. Right? Uh, all right, let's go on to what kind of sounds do you like coming out of your machine? Do you like just bells and chimes? Do you like that MIDI quality audio? Uh, or do you like full on high fidelity surround? It's like a movie theater. Uh, give me high fidelity now because, <laughs> you know, we have it available. Uh, I'm MIDI quality. Really? I love the lo-fi sound of things. There's, again, the simplicity of the music. Um, you had to actually be good with uh, programming music to be interesting without just being able to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to put a full-blown song that's already created in there. Yeah, done. That to me, I don't know, there was a certain... Uh, certain appeal to that handcrafted quality but there's there's absolutely a a quality to the um you know the yamaha fm chip sound yeah that you get with that midi um midi output they really did some amazing things with that but when you walk up to a food fighters machine and you pick mon monkey <laughs> wrench and that's your soundtrack while yeah. you're playing the game yeah it's you hype, man. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's no, really good. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Um, mm -hmm. I, shoot. Part of this bias might be because also I've not really played a lot of machines that are of <laughs> the high quality mm. sound. Um, it's Those have all escaped me. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to what I'm calling tactile or other. Um, these are things that uh, you are feeling or seeing on the table itself. Uh, mm. so toppers, I know some people love an elaborate interactive topper, um, mm. having a machine that has a shaker motor in it so that it's really just tossing that machine around. Um, something that has a unique ball launcher, not just a standard plunger. So, you know, demolition man with those triggers up on the, or, well, that's actually mm. flippers that are on the top, but you know, the pistol that grips, also cool triggers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, the pistol grips, um, shoot, maybe you just like pushing a button, the gear shift on uh, Getaway, um, that mm. kind of thing, right? Um, something that has computer-controlled flipper gags. Um, like I know reverse those are, flippers and stuff. Reverse flippers and stuff. Um, I, they have, I know they're starting to make more appearances in real machines, but obviously Zen has been doing this on quite a few of their machines <clears> um, or, or you know their tables. So that... And then something that does what I'm calling lighting blackouts. So anytime that it's uh, darkening the table to make the ball obscure to see. Um, yes, I'm going to include 
Tommy with the blinder <laughs> in this. Um, oh, yeah. But anything that makes it hard to see the ball and flip it. Uh, so for these, you get mm. to pick two that are uh, of your Interesting category, favor. this one. Um, I'd say for me, uh, one that I don't have to think about very much is Shaker Motors. Mm -hmm. um, well, incorporated well into the theme, Shaker Motors really make a difference to the tactile nature of the game. Um, I think the other one for me, I, I detest flipper gags. Okay. I hate them. <laughs> um, I end up just monkey flipping and feeling like I'm just playing pinball for the first time ever. Uh -huh. I hate them. Um, but I think probably a unique ball launcher that's integrated well into the game is great for me. Like your, your examples of like, you know, the getaway with a gear shift that you have to actually use in the game to play. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's a really nice tactile inclusion that matters in the game. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my picks there. I'm going with, I agree with the shaker motor. There's something about having the whole machine just rumble. Uh, yeah, that's very cool. Um, yeah, I don't think it's any surprise here. Lighting blackouts for me, <laughs> I love. Oh yes, <laughs> I love I knew you were gonna pick that. where it goes with that. Um, yeah, lighting blackouts with the strobe. Oh yes. Oh yes. Like or with oh, the yes. or neon multi ball and the circus Voltaire. Oh, oh yeah, yes. yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but just turning off the lights for no reason. No, no. Like there's a yeah in um, Judge Dread where they do blackout. 2x blackout mode where yeah. they cut the the uh, gi mm -hmm. that's a nothing mode for me yeah but like a like you say yeah a lighting blackout with a purpose to it yeah that's that is a hard one not to like but i i just it just unique ball launches trumped it for me yeah um okay i'm i call this play field you get to pick mm. one of these do you like a standard size pin a super size or not a super pin width or yep. w-i-d-e wide pin obviously <laughs> so you with a system 80 <laughs> those are wide square pins wide, so yeah what is your what is your choice pins. what do you prefer oh this is, this is tough i think while i do have a fair few wide tables mm -hmm. in my collection like all the system 80s are almost really they're super pin size tables really uh, they're super pin wide, really. I think for the the Gottlieb system eighties, they're um, not they're not like uh, future spa wide. No. Okay. No, they're not future spa or, or paragon wide. Or paragon no, wide, yeah. That is that is the era of star race for me. Um, okay. And paragon and future spa. Yeah. Um, I those have a place, but I think really super pin for me. Okay. Um. Because you just get a little bit of real estate you can do really cool things with. Like you, the scale of the toys get bigger. The life on the glass can be more better realized with a wider form factor. It's just a shame to see Stern not doing those anymore. Like they're, they're really fun. Like uh, Spooky did Scooby-Doo recently and it was its first, their first wide body machine. And it's just amazing the amount of stuff they were able to jam into that machine. Um, whether it was well implemented is up to the individual, but the fact that they were able to do all that stuff in it makes it super pin for me. What about you? Uh, I am standard width. Standard, eh? That's what my preference is. I like the speed of a standard width. I like mm. the... Um... Again, I think this falls back into the simplicity of play. Uh, when you start going with mm. a... even Even the super pin wide you're adding an extra lane into mm. uh, usually two extra lanes into uh, your return lanes. Um, the, now you have an outer orbit and maybe an inner orbit. Uh, there's, there's suddenly a myriad of paths, which can be good, but mm. I also think uh, aiming on them is a lot more difficult. I like the, the economy that has to be used with a standard width. Those oh, square wide bodies, I don't like at all. They're too slow. Um, Paragon, like, I've been playing Paragon a fair bit, and it is, it's fun once you get your eye in. Yeah. But it is, Future Spar is not my favorite game. Um, it's surprisingly the same width as Paragon, but it's got a very different feel to it. I just don't really like it. It's quite clunky, very wide, floaty. Not that good. No, no. Um, all right. Next up, we have uh, 
layout. 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 Okay, mm-hmm. so you get to pick two. And the reason why I'm sticking okay. to because they're, they're kind of... I don't know that I've necessarily got everything here, <laughs> even, even close. Um, mm. You got your fan layout. Just think yep. Medieval Madness. It's just yep. a fan of lanes. Uh, you got your asymmetrical layouts. <clears throat> Um, like the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone is an asymmetrical, for sure. Uh, a lot of your EMs are asymmetrical uh, mm. with how they how they went. Um, games that have an upper and lower play field. Now, this could be whether you want to think like a, a Haunted House with it being a sub-play field, or if you want to think about uh, upper play fields like Black Knight, where there's an upper play field you know, there. Uh, mini mm. play field anything of that upper, lower kind of play field. Um, yep. And then we have, do you like a flow table? Uh, or do you like a table that is stop and go, where you actually have to catch mm. that ball and aim that ball? Um, or do you like a table that has a lot of side action? Um, so there's a lot of tables where you need that mid flipper to hit something that's directly going to the side of the machine. Either or. Um, I already know your picks here. Do I you don't know? even need you. I, I don't <laughs> even need you to tell me. Okay. So for me, yes. Uh, fan and upper and lower play field. Okay. What do you think mine are? And the reason why I went fan is because fan implies flow. Um, mm. So for you, it can. Um, flow and side action. Nope. Are your picks? Nope. No. Really? Did I get one of them right? Nope. <laughs> oh, okay. I went fan and stop and go. Really? Yeah. Fan and stop and go. So, a l- fan, I can't deny that I love. Because I mm. really love Medieval Madness. I really love Monster mm. Bash. Um, stop and go, that basically describes any Pat Lawler table. Oh, right, okay. So, so it goes to the source, it kicks it out, you do a shot. Yeah. I'm not right. the biggest fan. When I think flow, I think Steve Ritchie. And my mind immediately goes to something like No Fear, where it's just lane after lane after lane that you're shooting and I find that really boring I also get a little stressed out over that's why I didn't pick combo heaven um, mm. because it's just your quick timing and you know doing live shots over and over again and I like to capture my ball and kind of aim so yeah yeah well yeah I mean you can do that on a flow table as well you, know, you can do any of these things on a lot of these tables but yeah. I, I'm just when I walk up to a table what's going to grab me Am I going to be like, yeah, oh, right, that's okay. interesting, or not? This is what's going to, what's going to grab me. Mm, um, yes. Okay, we got two more categories to go here. So this next yep. one is targets. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> do you like drop targets? Do you like stand-up targets? Or do you like a play field that doesn't even bother with targets? <laughs> How would you have a play field that doesn't bother with targets? That is again, no people. fear does not have targets. Oh, that's true. It's all ramps, isn't it? It's all ramps and lanes. Um, there's yeah, a, and there's it. and there's a uh, lot of tables that are that are that way. They don't have stand up targets. They don't have drop targets. There's things that mm. they'll score by hitting, but that's not really the point. It's not a bank yeah. of them or anything else like that. Yeah, like that's what I'm thinking too. So for me, and this my collection speaks to this. Drops all day, every day. Drop yeah. targets for the win. I'm gonna I'm gonna go drops too. Um, yeah. there's they're just fu- they're too much fun. Even if you only have three drop targets on there, they, it's still something. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Uh, all right, last category, which is you know if we started with the flippers, we're gonna end with how you drain the ball. <laughs> um, Makes sense. And how you might save that ball from draining. So I'm calling this the straight down the middle category. Do you like a table mm-hmm. that has and you get to pick one, a center post that has kickbacks, that has lane save. Or not, uh, or lane save. So when I say lane save, there's either a flipper to save it, and honestly, I'm thinking uh, uh, some of the Zacharias do this, but also uh, Super League Soccer does this. Um, oh, with the actual with the actual flipper to launch it. Uh, but also yeah. lane save could be Centaur, where you do a nudge to bump it back into play. Uh, isn't Foo Fighter? Yeah, they've got the overdrive, the overdrive. posting that kicks it back in. Right. To, yeah. Into play. Um, so anyway, I'm saying that's a lane save. Uh, ball saver, which is just plain light the ball saver, and if you drain, boom, you get another ball. Mm. Or magma save. Look for me. I I always think 
out lanes are brutal. So mm-hmm. for me, it's lane saves. And that's what I'm going with too. <laughs> yep. I don't... Because that's... You, you know, you can you can mostly affect the, the travel of play with flippers. Yeah. But honestly, lane slaves are... Lane, lane slaves. Lane slaves. <laughs> lane saves. Uh, touch and go. Uh, you know, sometimes physics will go your way. Even if you try and, and tilt the best you can, sometimes it just will not. So having a lane save there is really handy. Yeah. I... Uh... Center posts, in one hand, they kind of feel like cheating to me. And in the other mm. hand, I get mad when I forget that there's a center post there to begin with. And rather than just doing nothing with my flipper and letting the ball bounce on it, I still flip and then I drain anyway because now I've diverted it wrong. Um, yeah. So center posts just tend to make me angry. <laughs> um, hey, look, so center posts were making me angry just last night when I was playing Whirlwind on <laughs> Zen Pinball. Oh, man. Uh it was just brutal last Not night. Not to mention that any good the bounces. center posts, well, of that nature of center post, that was up to the operator if they even put them in. Uh, Correct. But yeah. then you get center post like uh, Space On Shuttle. big guns. Big and, guns. Uh, uh, Champion and bigger, Pub. Champ Pub. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Harley David. Um, <laughs> uh, and then as for uh, kickbacks are fine, but you gotta mm-hmm. light them. Yeah, Which... you know, on the subject of kickbacks, this is an aside, but I actually found an EM that had a kickback. Really? The other day. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was at at BPAC, and it was an actual kickback on an EM. I was blown away that huh. this happened. 1971. This table was okay. I had a kickback. Wild. Um, Couldn't believe it. And then Magna save. I just tend to forget to even activate it. Oh, that, that's like, they may as well not exist. <laughs> I may just... saves may not exist. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, it's one of the things that I love that Zen has done where on some of their tables, it says Magna save is, but it doesn't even make you activate it. it if your ball drains, just it, it just does it for you and kicks it back out. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, it's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Like, and that, that again is a, is a play on lane saves really. It is. It? It is like the one of my favorite lane saves. I think is the um, the cage that comes up on um, uh, the Tales of the Arabian Nights. Oh it's yeah, it's literally a cage that captures the ball before it drains. Yeah, uh, and even on Theater of Magic, how it has a magnet underneath there that will grab mm-hmm. the ball and from draining. Like those mm-hmm. are that's lane save heaven for me. Like that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, great, so. really great. All right, so if if this was you know a Buzzfeed quiz it would have told us exactly what pin we should be playing but i wasn't going to sit here and categorize hundreds of pinball machines so that it would do that for me (laughs) no so (laughs) but if anybody out there wants to yeah link it tell us and we will promote that so that people can go play that kind of a quiz (laughs) yeah that's right Um, it was fun that was a that was a fun exploration it made you think about the things that matter to you in pinball. It really does. Um, yeah, it was good. Um, because I mean, I think we always make snap judgments as soon as we see something and go, oh yeah, that's something I'm going to like, or oh, no, I'm not going to really like that. Um, mm. It's why I don't like Zoltan's tables. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, just, yes. It's, it's why I tend to not like most of the Jersey Jack tables. Um because mm. I feel like their focus is on the wrong things. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Anywho. All right. Well, that was fun. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed uh, going through that. Um, and maybe tell us in the comments what kind of, uh, if you took this quiz, what it is that you'd pick. And, yeah, if you uh, played along at home, yeah. um, what's your picks? Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. That being said, we're going to call it uh, quits for right now. Hopefully, we won't be so long getting back into uh, our next episode. Um, mm. But I just know work schedules of mine. I think I'm working the next two weekends. I don't know. Anyway, because there's mm. there's stuff going on at Disney, the big convention that I'm working. So, um, but yeah, we'll be back for more. Uh, if there's topics you guys would love to hear us talk about, please chime in. Let us know um, what you want to have more of. I'm thinking of doing some reviews on all of these uh, tables that have 
out with uh, at games from Zen, uh, specifically yeah. under the guise of how is it playing in cabinet mode? <laughs> um, does that make it worth yeah. worth purchasing? Um, so that might come out on a separate video, uh, and I'd probably do it by pack. That's again I if I have time to do it. Right. Yeah, that's if I have mm. time to do it because. <sighs> They seem to be well time. received on yeah. the channel. Yeah, like people like to watch the the like side by side comparisons. So, yeah, and I, good news on my front too. Uh, very very close, folks, to getting fiber to the premises internet. Yay! Yeah. So, I am I'm going to be ramping up the streaming again once I have reasonable internet that will upload not at you know, a snail's pace. So yeah, yeah I'll I'll be doing more streaming. Um, probably not as much as I was doing before, but still some. So, yeah. I do got to wonder, uh, just based off of uh, movie box office, uh, how Zen is feeling about not being able to release Deadpool on at games right now? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, uh, probably and, not happy. And and more to the point, do you think that now that possibly will be a cabinet uh, offering through at games? Because <laughs> um, I imagine a lot of people would uh, like a. Uh, a skin. Oh, I think they probably like a, skin a Deadpool. bit of Deadpool. Yeah, it's. I mean, and this is a this is a very interesting comparison between what Stern did and what Zen did mm -hmm. in their in their game. Um, Interesting. They yeah. used. They both used the exact same voice actor. Yes, because there is one really good voice actor out there that does Deadpool, um, and yeah, he's really great. <laughs> so yes. it's something North, right? Um, yeah, something what, like that. I forget yeah. what his first name is, but he's he's got it down pat. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking about that. I was like, boy, with all the money, that would have been a perfectly timed release, and people would be like, yay! Um, I think that um, uh, Stern did a code update recently to Deadpool, and I mm, I don't know the particulars of it. I really would have hoped if there was a Deadpool and Wolverine battle mode uh, yeah. <laughs> something like that you know something just sneaky that they threw in that would be smart because they have the ability to do it yeah you know they, yeah. they have a platform right a dead full platform they'd be mad not to just make updates to things you know yep so it'll be interesting because there's still no word on when star wars or marvel is going to come to uh to add games um mm. but i mean it's gonna happen it's just a question of when uh, when yeah you know so meanwhile i'm still just crossing my fingers as to when the hell are we going to get our aliens pinball uh, oh yeah in fx pinball effects because i need yeah, that. Geez, that it seems to be taking so long i really hope they do it what who owns that now it's disney it's that, the the, it's... the the issue <laughs> is that uh uh what was it two years ago uh so this is post merger mm. disney laid off seven thousand employees uh, the entire fox licensing division was one of those that got laid off no right okay so there ain't nobody to send contracts to <laughs> now you okay. would think that it's been corrected since then oh i'd say someone else has picked up the licensing discussion. you would hope but... you would hope but mm. um again i'm like ah, oh, alien romulus comes out in two weeks it would have been so great to have that drop in pinball effects um yeah so there's and then when i fire up otg a... that's the one i'm playing that's what you're playing <laughs> that's what i'm playing yeah, that's what you're playing so yeah. on pinball effects yep three that's what yeah. it is so all right yeah it's a good good collection that one there we go so Ex except for that predator versus aliens one which is not part which can just be forgotten about the witch uh yeah the the alien versus predator with the bad voice actors one again the just... the table the 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 game itself is fun. The callouts are atrocious. Not fun. No, yeah. they're just so bad. Mm. I should put up a comparison between that and uh, Kong, <laughs> and be like, and "Here, here, everybody, listen to how bad." Because I, I almost even think the music sounds the same. Yeah. So yeah, some of these releases do have very nondescript music in them. Um. All right, until yeah, uh, that's that's all we got for you. This has been... Look, we were making up for lost time here. 
<laughs> yeah, we did go long today, but yeah, you, know. you all understand. Um, mm. So that's all what we got for you this time. Uh, hey, say hello to us, right? We're on the uh, the Twitters, and we're uh, we got the email, which nobody emails us, so that's okay. But you can leave yeah. us plenty of comments in the YouTube because we always do comment on all that. Uh, but that's what this week is all about. Next week, Jared, stuff and things. Sure, uh, why not? We'll, we'll talk do that. about that. All right. Mm. Until then, bye bye. See you later, everyone.